We begin tonight with fallout that began over the weekend when the CEO of Jackson Health System announced pay cuts and furloughs for some non-clinical employees. Yeah, the timing of it is especially upsetting for some workers who were asked to use their paid leave time to help ease the financial strain the Jackson Hospital System now faces with the cancellation of revenue generating elective procedures. Earlier today, CBS 4's Jim DeFeedy spoke to Martha Baker. She is the head of the union that represents more than 5,000 Jackson Health employees. We're going to need to create more ICUs than we have. We're going to need more practitioners to help write orders in those ICUs. We're going to need more environmental workers in those ICUs. We're going to need more nursing assistants. Um, nurses can't take a normal load even when you've got to don and doff every time. That slows you down tremendously. And you can't make a mistake. If you make a mistake, you spread the virus. So this is, uh, I was talking to some nurses at Jackson North. Normally they have five patients. They're having three because it's so much work to don and doff. Take on your, your protective gear and take it off and go into rooms and then have to leave and go get an IV, leave and go get a dressing change. These are things that the having people that could even just be runners to help you go get things could save time immensely for a nurse and save on precious PPE if I don't have to take it off to go to the supply room, then put it back on to get back in my room. Uh, there's plenty of work, I believe, for everyone. I think, um, you know, in this case, it looks like management and perhaps, you know, our CFO is kind of, you know, high stressed. I can understand that about the budget. But, you know, Jackson's in a good place. We have 200 million cash on hand. We've got a $200 million line of credit. Uh, every commissioner and I got to tell you, on Friday when I heard that they were going to furlough nurses and doctors, I called Joe Ariola, chairman of the board, who knew nothing of this, and he was 100% supportive of us. Uh, I continued to call through other public health trust members, all of whom knew nothing. What well, wait a second. I, I want to hold you there. You're saying that the chairman of the public health trust and the members of the public health trust were not briefed on this plan to to start cutting salaries and furloughing workers and potentially laying off nurses, the public health trust, the people who oversee the hospital, weren't informed by Magoya or the chief financial officer of what was going on? That's what I'm told by the chairman and I believe him. We were at a, Tuesday we were at a public health trust meeting. That was never discussed. Uh, Friday, the letter was sent about 10 a.m. Uh, from Magoya that we were gonna begin furloughs. Not with a lot of detail, just a broad message that says we're going to begin furloughs because of the economic crisis that this COVID crisis has caused. I think they got it backwards. I think we have to put the, the financial crisis on the back burner and focus on the health care crisis. This email that Magoya sent out announcing these cuts came exactly one week to the day after Selly, the ICU nurse who worked at Jackson, died. So you have a hospital that was grieving the loss of a nurse and then gets hit with this notice. What, what's been the reaction, just from an emotional standpoint, among your nurses, doctors, and the other healthcare workers at Jackson when they receive this email? Right. This is not a team building exercise, that's for sure. If we're getting ready to go into the worst fight, somebody on the this morning news called it Pearl Harbor and you know, whatever catastrophe we're looking at, 9-11, uh, this crisis is, is, you know, unfathomable to think what it could possibly be. I don't know how any leaders at this time could be doing anything but planning for the worst and having all hands on deck. And if we can look backwards and say, wow, it wasn't as bad as we thought, hallelujah. But on the front end, we've got to prepare. And uh, for people to be feel like we're just another number, that Sully can die and that's okay. And then we're gonna go on to, you know, if we've got this three week law, let's send some nurses in newborn ICU home. Let's send some social workers home. Uh, we don't really need the people in billing. You know, let's just send them home. And then in three weeks when we need them all back, when we're hopping with COVID patients, we'll bring them all back. 